Haugen with superscum.com and we are here at the Gothic Theater in Englewood, Colorado with ATF Sinner and Destroyer from the Polish death metal band Hate. How's it going? It's perfect. It's been a very good tour. Uh, more than four weeks now. We are really happy about it. We are really satisfied. This is our second stay in the, in the United States second uh, tour. This one is a long, long tour because we started uh, like two months ago with uh, Rotting Christ and Malakesh. Now it's a continuation with Sepultura and Belfagor. Still two weeks to, to go. Now what is the difference between the tour with Rotting Christ and now with Sepultura? It's um, much more people on this on the second tour. I mean the Sepultura one. The first one was like warming up for the second one. And this is the main difference. And of course, there's more bands here now. It's mm, <laughs> time regime, much bigger than it was on the previous tour. More discipline. More I discipline. Yeah, more discipline. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. We like it. Now, this is the, uh, only the second time that you guys toured in the United States. Uh, do you think you gained a lot more fans this time around? Yeah, well, I'm sure we've noticed that. Uh, it's, it's been growing. I mean, the group of people that uh, support us also. Uh, we, we've been gaining new fans on this tour for sure because a lot of people coming to see Sepultura have never heard of, of a band like Hate before. So we perceive this as a great opportunity for us. And um, yeah, it's, we've had a great time on this tour. Yeah, definitely. Now let's talk about your new album that came out well, last year in Europe and this year in the United States. Okay, Arebos. Yeah. Um, uh, you guys again went with uh, Hertz Studios, but I want to say you were looking into other studios because this is actually your fourth album. Why did you decide to go back with them? There are many, many reasons. I mean, uh, uh, at first we decided on some other studio. We even booked some some dates in that other studio, but after some serious talk with the Slavsky brothers, with, with whom we've been friends for years, uh, we decided to to change this because the studio is is changing all the time. It's like in a in a way it's growing up with us uh, because this was Erebos. It's actually the fourth album that we've uh, realized in this studio. And each time uh, it's a different studio. I mean, same people, but different equipment, uh, higher standard, uh, new technologies and stuff, you know. That's why we uh, decided to to go back to Hertz once more and and uh, realize that I was there. And what is what is important too, that uh, work with Brzezowski brothers is amazing. They're very fast. They have they are very well, well organized. Very well organized, so, so we can do some things much faster than anywhere else. Very now, concrete. Now, other Polish bands are also recording with the, uh, at Hertz Studios. Are you afraid that um, the sound or the production that they do kind of gets you guys mixed up mm. more like, okay, they sound like Vader, they sound like uh, Behemoth? Or was that never in the back of your mind? It's not possible, I think, because we use different gear that in other bands. For example, we took our amps to record guitar tracks. We, uh, we used different drums. We did a mastering in different studio, not in Hertz studio. So it's completely different uh, sound in overall. Yeah. And we recorded uh, some things for the first time in our career, like drums, for example. We recorded live drums. Never happened before for us there. Mm -hmm. Completely live drums, I mean. That's right. And, and, and this oh. to a question about drums. Uh, does Hexen um, write his own drum parts or do you? We we usually do it together. I mean, I can't... Because Erebus was the second album that Hexen was yeah. credited at, yeah. you know, being arranged also drum parts. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a, it's a teamwork, really. I mean, I'm, I come up with the main ideas, the main riffs also with the main arrangements and then we uh, we you know go through some versions usually of each song uh, with Hexen then Destroyer is is adding some solo parts 
we we develop it you know in different ways usually go we'll go F, through a few versions we also test them on our live shows before coming to the studio before you know putting them on tape so um, yeah it's a process and uh, it lasts until the last minutes before mixing and and then before mastering mm -hmm. so yeah and the um, your your previous question was about the uh, work working with the Slavsky brothers i must say uh, they know our style they know uh, very well our potential uh, that's why it's uh, much easier for us to collaborate with them than with some other studio and they are still developing they are still learning which is amazing which is fantastic and and which which can be heard in our new album at Ebos, i hope Your new album, Arabos, and again back with the with the drum question. The kick drums sound totally different. Did you guys use different equipment, or did he stuff pillowcases in the kick drums, or what was the scoop? We just uh, decided on natural uh, sound of the drums of the natural uh, drum kit, and um, you know we used amazing drum kits. Yeah, we used really amazing, amazing, very drum good drum kit. Um, it was easy. I mean, for the first time, it was so easy, and this work was so was so smooth. It was mm, like less than five weeks for the recording session, uh, mixes, and and also mastering because the Slavsky brothers did their version of mastering. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, in very intensive work and uh, and well organized, I think. So you guys use different drum equipment on on uh, Erebus than you did on Morphosis. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We used uh, completely different gear. We used completely different console microphones. Uh, also, the studio changed quite a bit. I mean, the the rooms where the the drums were recorded actually. So. So it's it's a new thing, absolutely. And speaking real quick of the recording process, I know that you guys were on tour forever, uh, uh, and in the states too with Hypocrisy before you recorded it. Um, did that help or hurt the recording process? Because you guys were on tour. So I think that um, before recording, it, it was very hard to record the album just after going back from the states. As in a few days, it took us three days yeah, to go to the studio, as far as I remember. But the thing was that um, we mm, test some tracks live, playing it live before recording, and it it, it helped us. How so to decide how it should be uh, on the mm -hmm. end, how it should sound, how it should be arranged. Yeah. So you don't feel the album was rushed? Hmm. You know, it, it was well prepared before, and... Uh, so you yeah, just put we, the finishing touches on when you came back? Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Uh, before, before your US tour, before, we did a demo, yeah. demo version of all songs. So going on tour, we had like nine songs yeah. already recorded with cool. guitars, with drums, with all arrangements. Every, everyone was uh, working for his parts on this album. So going back to stu the studio just after the tour, we know exactly what we should do yeah. and how it we should sound. We were prepared, we recorded a very detailed demo, mm. which is very helpful in the situations like that. Was Actually, we, we suffered from jet lag, you know, after coming from the States. And it took us a few days to to feel good in the studio, you know. But we, we just hang out with the Slavsky brothers for a few days, just to have a, just to, you know, find this right atmosphere to start recording. And then it, it went just smooth. Now, um, I had the opportunity to review the album before it came out. And I mean, it's not that I don't like it, I like it. But I think you guys could have pushed the envelope a little bit further. I, Me personally, I was expecting more. So can we expect more different stuff for the new album? Definitely. 
Definitely, one word. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, yeah, we have we have a lot of plans uh, musically and uh, conceptually. Conceptually, conceptually, we yeah we have a lot of different concept, um, you know, connected to the next recording. And I'm pretty sure that we will go much further this time. Uh, but still, we are very satisfied with the final result of uh, Erebus album, and and yeah, it's I think it's probably our best record thus far, especially when it comes to production side. You know. Now, what made you decide to use ambient elements anyway in your music? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a it's a part of our music. Yeah, but the, what made you decide to no. use it? It's um, I think that death metal, like traditional death metal, lacks some third dimension. You know what I mean? Some atmosphere, which is really important for us because we are pretty much influenced by black metal and alternative stuff also. So that's why you can find ambient and industrial influences in our music, some heavy metal here and there, some groovy stuff, you know. We we don't want to focus on just one one thing. We want to develop our style and to widen our perspective on the next record also, much more than on the Rebos. Because uh, on the recording of Rebos, we were pretty limited with time at the studio. That's why we didn't go farther with our ideas. But next time, I'm sure, We'll be in a more comfortable situation with a studio budget and etc. And uh, yeah, we'll do something uh, that most people would not would not expect that much. You know what I mean? Speaking of next time, uh, Erebus was your last album under contract with Listenable Records. Do you already have offers from other record labels? Yes, we do. <laughs> like uh, whom? So uh, if any record label is listening, Hate is still shopping. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been approached by uh, at least two uh, big, well-known uh, record labels, but... It's too early to say anything. It, yeah, it's too early to decide. We're now we are on tour. Uh, after the tour, we have some festivals in Europe, then some European tour. Some European tour. Um, then we'll be working on a on a video clip for the song Erebos. So I think that we'll make the final decision in in autumn uh, at the at the festus. You know, mm, it's also important. We play tour in November here in USA back with Mayhem and with Keep of Colors in too. So, yeah, so we're, we're we we decided to push live shows okay. to push it as much as possible to play promote ourselves yeah, promote to our play music as, as many shows as we are not in a hurry with uh, writing a contract now yeah. I just want to play a lot now with uh, you mentioned a video for Arabus is Arabus the only song that you're gonna release a video for from this album uh, we've been we have uh, quite a few scenarios for different songs Arabus is one of them the other one is wrists which we would love to have a video for it too, but um, it it still depends on first budgets, the the new contract with a with a new label. So uh, what is now sure is the video clip for Erebus. Uh, we've talked to some agencies about it. Uh, there are some you know really concrete plans, and we're working on them right after this tour. You know, yeah. How important is Corpse Paint for your performance and what does it represent to you? So, uh, for me it's something natural. I grew up in black metal society, let's say society, you know, playing black metal and ma uh, doing makeups, doing Corpse Paints was something typical for us. Na completely natural, it was like uh, getting on a higher spiritual level. There's uh, not only music, but some kind of spirit in this. And um, the same as Mortifier or Hexen, they also play black metal bands. It was something natural for them. 
it became natural for Adam to for ATF too. And <laughs> so, so uh, I can imagine hate without corpse paints now, because I feel that we are naked mm. now on stage, because it, it makes us feel somebody else to it's just a, to push it, some you know the urges. yeah the. Um, Wearing corpse paints, wearing those, those makes us helps to concentrate on, on what is coming. You know what you should do on stage. So it's a it's a kind of ritual. It it helps you draw from somewhere else. Maybe it sounds mad, but this is how we feel it. You know, so uh, it became a part of our of our show. Something really important for us. You know, and um, and it's not for the audience at all i mean it's it's rather for for us to to be more into the matter of the music and of the and of some other spiritual level you might say now um i also saw that especially you changed your stage outfit from last time you were here with hypocrisy why we we have all changed uh, our art outfits a little bit i mean conrad has a new outfit complete new outfit i I also have a new outfit, and uh, why? Because uh, we promote a new album. It's a new opening in a way. It's uh, it's something. It's a good occasion to be different, you know, to to tell people some other story. And the Rebus is a is a new story, you know. It's a um, album full of metaphors, uh, but generally it's about the this vicious evil side that is in, in each of us which is very powerful on, a, on one hand and on the other hand you can uh, it can work some benefits for you if you know how to do it so yeah cool. uh, quick question about the set list who's choosing the set list ATF or does he let you guys have input too oh choosing the set list was uh, <laughs> way to hell because uh, it was so hard for us because having only 30 minutes when we want to play 10 songs because we've got something here something there that we would like to play it's very hard because if we have a lot of songs to play choose the, the, the chosen five or six songs it's painful right. and, uh, and it was like uh, it was like thinking all of us were thinking what to do because we've got some songs that we have to play that we want to play we cannot imagine head show without three songs for example three or four and and what to choose this is right. the question right. it was like yeah. a democratic thing <laughs> <laughs> fighting each other all the time so it was some kind of democracy let's say but but finally it's some kind of compromise of kind between of, uh, and uh, some kinds of kind of tyranny Let, let's put it straight i mean yeah because it's so you know it takes time and arguments really so uh somebody has to make the decision and this is me usually <laughs> it looks like this cool. well um you already answered the question about what you're doing next with the festivals and you come back uh this fall with uh mayhem and keep of Collison. so any last words to the listeners and your fans um great thanks for uh for your support for your interest in what we're doing there is more to come much more to come um, you would like to play more in Europe, uh, but we have great offers in the States, so we'll be coming again and again. And uh, this year, as you said, we're coming again to play a tour with Mayhem and some other bands, which is a great opportunity for us, not just because it's Mayhem and great band that attracts many people, it's because we really respect Mayhem's input in the extreme music. This is something really, really special for us. Mm. It's like it's like a dream come true, you know. So, yeah, we are really excited about it and really looking forward to coming back to the U.S. Cool. All right, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.